This is going to be, honestly, it's going to be mental. I c I d I d I've said this too many times. I cannot wait for this to happen. <laughs> this was back in February, where times were a lot simpler for mankind until COVID came along and ruined everything. The pitch I was cancelled, Cholton got relegated, and I went bald. It, it, it's just a bad time. But after months and months and months, the pitch hire was set to be back on. Friday the 21st of May was the selected date until it went tits up again. When we receive an email from the football club stating that if Cholton were to make the top six, then the game would be off. Despite Nigel Adkins' best efforts to get a vastly mediocre league one side with an absolutely abysmal defensive record into the playoffs, they failed. Only just, thankfully. We are finally playing at the Valley until it was off again. Oh, come on! With Mason Burstow's last gasp winner for the Charlton under 18s against Birmingham winning 3-2 at the Valley, their regional final against Wigan's under 18s was to take place on Friday the 21st of May. Fortunately, the absolute miracle worker that is my dad managed to get a spot the following day on Saturday 7pm to 9.30pm. The game was finally, eventually, after lots and lots and lots of cancellations, so much uncertainty and us losing some very, very good men along the way. And also Dave Patterson. Hello there. We took centre stage at the Mighty Valley. It's been a long old journey. It's been very stressful trying to sort it all out, but today is finally the day. I am playing a full 90 minute game at the Valley. <laughs> it sounded so weird saying it, you know for this past year I've trying to sort everything out but now is finally the day now is game day it is it's literally it is a dream come true I know it's like a broken record all Charlton fans dream of playing on the hallow turf in SE7 but yeah this is going to be such a good day man it's going to be so special it's going to be it's going to be one of the best experiences of my life I'm going to be spending the rest of this day absolutely bricking it because the game's not until 7 so <laughs> I'm going to be spending the whole day just pacing up and down just thinking about it this is what we've got here for the kit selection today this is the only downside to the pitch IR is that the, the package doesn't include kits for some reason they've used the standard excuse of COVID as to why the kits uh, can't be provided even though washing machines exist. You couldn't not play at the Valley and wear red, you know, what are you doing if you're not wearing red? Obviously I wear an undershirt when I play football as well. Then you've got the Sun Daiko black shorts and the black Nike socks. Now these are the boots that I'm gonna be playing in, standard Nike Mercurial Superfly, I think they're called, like the pink ones. I've had these for absolutely years. That is the attire and yeah, as I say, I just need to get everything sorted out for today. This needs sorting out, I need to get the barnet trimmed before the game. Sorted. Boom. Montage. Come on! We're in the home changing room. The kit is on. The red men. The red men got the home changing room here. Come on, the red men! Come on! Come on! Come on, the boys. Come on, boys! Green lions! Oh, sorry, 
Bueno, hombre. Queen Army! Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on. <laughs> off. Better than Majeski. <laughs> off. On the field, man. So surreal, honestly. So surreal. This is unbelievable. What you're about to see for the rest of this video consists of multiple, and I mean multiple, camera angle changes and some varied changes in quality. As we are going from my GoPro footage to multiple different footages, footage, footages on many different phones. So I just want to let you guys know on that. I must admit some of the footage is also quite difficult to see as for some reason someone thought it was a brilliant idea to film some of their clips in portrait. Not mentioning names. Don't know how good that shot's gonna have to be. Just to trust it. Come on. Uh, so here I am, walking away from the GoPro, thinking that all is absolutely fine with the world, only to discover that literally two minutes into the recording, things just went horribly wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the GoPro went upside down. Uh, anyway, thank God editors these days now have the rotate button where you can literally crop the image 180 degrees, so we managed to salvage something. Looking back at this footage now, I literally have no idea how I've not realised that the GoPro was upside down. Literally, look at me. I'm staring directly into the GoPro sole and haven't realised this is the actual footage of the GoPro. Like, that is the actual state of it. That. That's what it was. And after fixing the technical side of things a little bit, we got straight into the warm-up and some practice shots. Which went well. We did 20 ticks, and that was the best one. Allow me to introduce you to all of the players involved, starting off with the green machine. Going from left to right, we have the old man. He would have been playing in between the sticks today if he hadn't dislocated his finger two weeks before. Next to him, you've got the little man, Preston. And next to him, you've got Paul Greenhead. He used to be a shit-hot player back in the day. Now he sits around with a dodgy knee, reminiscing over what could have been. Armin, otherwise known as Arms. And next to him, you have my YouTube follower, Harley. I was allowing two of my YouTube subscribers to play in in the game. Unfortunately, the other YouTube follower, Dan Windham, ended up pulling out on the day due to illness, which was a real shame. From the moment that we'd decided that we were going to do this at the Valley, it was always in my mind that I wanted to get you guys involved somehow, and it was just really nice to get one of you guys involved. As I say, it was a real shame that Dan couldn't turn up and we couldn't make it too, but regardless, Harley, if you are watching this video, mate, thank you very much for turning up, and I hope you did enjoy yourself. Ryan Donahue and Lewis Nolan, two of my old school friends and two absolute ballers. And next to those two, you have got the Roy Keane of the squad. Rob Sexton, because he's Irish, and you couldn't have guessed that by the kit he's wearing. Slightly in the background, you've got Uncle Steve. Just in front of him, also in the background, you've got the late substitution, Ryan Francis. He doesn't look like he can play, but trust me, he can play. Then we've got Dynamo, aka Tony Gear, the shortest player on the pitch. My brother Bradley, and then like father, like son, Lewis and Jamie Marshall. Lewis is a threat. Jamie, not so much. And that bloke on the end in black is the Green Machines player manager, G. And then moving on to my boys, the Red Men. It's our manager, Mike Stone, AKA Brokeback Mike. We call him that because he managed to break his back at Wembley two years ago. In between the sticks, we have got Reese. Prior to the game, he told us that he hadn't played in goal for a couple of years, but after seeing his highlights from this game, you'd think he's the reincarnation of Christ. The back four consisted of Terry Upton at left back and at right back, my brother Georgie, and yes, before you ask, him and Bradley are twins. And in the two centre back, 
positions, you've got my old schoolmate Oliver. He eats KFC a lot and drinks a lot of John Smiths, so we've sent him straight to the back. And partnering him, repping the Charlton colours, is our skipper, Jamie White. He likes to call himself the Jason Pierce of the team. I prefer to call him Ryan Innes due to his towering height, and quite frankly, I think Pierce is a bit of an insult to his ability. The two holding midfielders were George Edwards, also known as George Jew, don't ask. And next to him, we have the vice captain, Mark Mansfield. Three attacking midfielders, if you will. The left-hand side was yours truly, who was desperately hoping to improve upon that shambolic display back in 2019. We had D in the centre, in behind the striker, best attacking presence. And on the right-hand side is another schoolmate, Tommy Middleton. And with him, I've already grabbed myself a win before the game's even started. I've managed to get a Millwall fan wearing red. And up top on his own is our assistant manager, Jack. And that leaves on the bench, Bobby Greenhead, Uncle Darrell, Steve Ridley, and Sam, who isn't in this picture. And with those squad pictures, it was time to get going. Okay. Go on, Tyler, man. Well done, bro. Nice save, Steve. <laughs> That's a save as far as he's concerned. Mine don't hurt your back bending over like that, old boy. Meanwhile. Oh, go on, Tyler. Go on, Tyler. Oh, go on, Tyler. Oh, unlucky. Oh, keeper. Go on, Steve. Go on. Go on. Go on. On your good oh. 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 No. <laughs> oh. 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 Yes! The Red Men take the lead 1 0. D's got the goal. 25 minutes in. D at the bar. And then Steve tried to follow it up and shanked it, but it stayed in play. And D's taking it. Left foot past the keeper. 1 0 to the Red Men. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's a proper manager, Mike. Look, out in the rain, directing the team. <laughs> Humiliation. Go on, Tyler! Go on, Tyler! Let's get him, Tyler! Let's get him! No! No way! Well done, Brad or George. Who, who was that? Whichever one. Whichever one. <laughs> yeah. I think that's George, isn't it? Yeah, it's George. Yeah. Penalty. Is it a penalty? <laughs> He'd give a penalty. Bullshit. Oh, no. Go on, Tyler! On, Boom! Look at him run! Oh, oh, come on! Oh, oh, good ball, good ball. Inside, go on, Tyler! Oh! Oh, oh. Save, keeper! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's half time. The Red Men are 3 1 up. D with a brace. And George Jew with the other one. Come on. Fucking come on. He got a brace. George Jew. And then who got. Uh, yeah, Jamie White own goal for the cream machine. And then Reese heroically saved the penalty from Lewis Nolan. But yeah, quality after that. The conditions have been absolutely ridiculous. I nearly had a chance to score, man. Sprinted through, tried to lob it over the hey! keeper. Fuck it, hey! Tried to lob it over the keeper, not enough power, and then Tommy couldn't steer it in. Oh, Fence got away, but good after. Good after, lads. lads. Three, one. Quality. Yeah. Yeah. Preparations in for the second half. Play the game, keep the ball moving. Exactly that, yeah. Yeah, 3 1 up at the moment. Keep the ball moving. Very light. There's some, so much space in that pitch, seriously. The midfield is so open. Left hand side is there. Oh, is that it? Come on, boys! Go straight back out there. I just run back and forth. Yeah. I'm hoping that bloke will start at 7 again, yeah? I mean, back Yeah, by the sounds of it. Messi, 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 immense Messi, Ankara 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 Messi, He's caging, Come on, he's got a perch and a mirror. My buddy is caging, bigger than this. 
Tyler is puffing up his ass. <laughs> Look at the state he's in. Put him out of his misery, poor sod. Oh, ball. Oh, unlucky. Oh, I'm still sat there. You alright then? Yeah, but no. That's it! Come on! Come on! <laughs> Tyler! Come on, Tyler! Come on, Tyler! Oh, Tyler. oh no! Come on! Oh. Those last two clips right there are honestly agonising to watch. There was honestly my best chance of the game and seriously, all I had to do again was just put it into the far corner and that would have beaten the keeper and that would have been a goal but I've literally just shot it straight at him going for the near post and the keeper sort of just reacted and managed to pull off the save and then the second shot I've literally just got the ball from the corner. I took the corner quickly which definitely wasn't within the D and kicked it back and I've got it back off the player that comes short and I've literally just taken a shot trying to bend it but it was straight into the keeper's arms. It was... It, it was it was very tough. It was very tough to take. And Green Machine coming away with a 6-4 victory, which was, you know, very frustrating from a Redmond point of view, seeing as we were 3-1 up at half-time and seemingly in cruise control. I think all of the boys did end up saying that we got way too complacent after that first half and we were just absolutely knackered. We threw basically five of their best attacking players straight at us in the second half against a very tired defence and against a very tired um, squad and it was quite deflating you know, to watch those goals go in and as you can see by the footage at full time I, I, I was quite disheartened at first, I was very very disheartened, one because we'd lost in the fashion that we did, you know we were winning the game but the second one was I didn't score and I'd put so much preparation in training. I've scored a lot of goals in training and thought, like, yes, this is my main opportunity. I did think I had a good game. You know, I run about a lot and did have my chances. But there were some chances that I had that I felt like I squandered and I could have done a lot better. And my initial reaction on the pitch was one of frustration, annoyance. And it did get to me a little bit. It did get to me a little bit, I won't lie. Because I, I had literally, like, dreamt of this for a year thinking like, okay, I've got a score, I've got a score. And unfortunately, it didn't end up happening, which, as I say, it, it was it was quite difficult to take at first. But I think eventually, as the night progressed on, I sort of got over it in the end and thought, I've played at the Valley and I need to remember that. You know, I have just played at the Valley. One of my childhood dreams, you know, a dream come true for me. No opportunity like that is ever going to come about again and seriously it was just an absolutely unbelievable night and I will honestly never forget it. I am still gutted that I didn't find the back of the net but I was very proud and very emotional should I say that I got the opportunity to do this after the game. Well done Tyler! Tyler yay! For Granddad Rose! He's loving it, he's loving it. He's enjoyed his silk, that's amazing. 
So if you don't follow me on Instagram and you don't know me personally, you probably won't know what that is and what that means to me and the significance of it. Now, the shirt obviously reads Rowlinson 87 and the meaning behind it is that shirt is dedicated to my late great granddad who sadly passed away back in 2016 to cancer. He was 87 years old and he was a massive, massive part of my life. When he passed away, it did, you know, it did hit quite hard for me and my family. And I felt that the best way to keep him with me was the number 87. It is today my favorite number. I did leave the pitch, you know, with my head held higher, knowing that I think I'd done him proud that night. You know, I think I'd done him proud with my performance. And I think that he would have enjoyed himself watching over us, but I just wish that I did hope that he'd still be here today to witness that and to, um, yeah, to, to witness uh, to witness that night. He'd have absolutely loved it. So, yeah, that was it. The day sort of ended after that. The game obviously came to a close. We went back into the changing rooms, got showered up, got changed, and then went to the players' lounge after the game, which we had for roughly, I think it was like two hours and a bit. The atmosphere was honestly incredible you know you've seen the chants that were going on the support and the passion that all my all of my family and everybody's family were showing on that day it was honestly incredible i have to say a massive thank you to charlton athletic for giving us the opportunity to do this the pitch hire scheme is absolutely incredible and i would strongly strongly recommend it to anybody whether you're a charlton fan or not a charlton fan get down the valley and do it massive shout out to all of the stewards and the staff that were working that night as well you know they worked in such a professional manner and they were really really friendly on the night as well yeah that's it guys that is it that is my night of playing a full 90 minute game at the valley literally a week has passed since the game and i still can't quite believe it you know i still cannot believe that i played a full 90 minute game at the valley honestly just just something that will live with me forever, you know, something that will honestly never, ever fade away from my memory. You know, I have supported this club my entire life. Went to my first game in 2007. Took a little while to grow into it, but eventually fell in love and haven't looked back since. And honestly, to play on the tallow turf of some of my favourite players and some of my heroes, you know, is honestly incredible it is honestly incredible to think that i got the opportunity to do that so once again thank you to charlton athletic for giving us the opportunity massive shout out to the stewards and the staff that night massive shout out to all of the players that played on the day massive shout out to all of the spectators that were there on the day again a special shout out to my subscriber harley thank you mate for turning up on the day as i say i hope you did enjoy yourself and it was really really nice that i got the opportunity to do that and give my subscribers the opportunity to get involved and play in the match obviously it was a real shame that dan couldn't turn up that night but it was just really really nice to give away the spots to some followers and if i was to do it again in the future i would definitely be doing it again i'd be definitely getting you guys involved for sure and yeah who knows at some point that future game may end up happening you know who knows we may get back down the valley again and we may have to have a rematch and the Red Men will be needing to get their revenge. But yeah, that's it, guys. That is it. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, can you leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here. Turn on this post notifications so you're notified of when I post. We are approaching 3,000 subscribers. So if we could get to that very soon, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you all for the continued support over this season. It has honestly been greatly appreciated. And it's been absolutely super from all of you. This has been Tyler Rowlinson. Have a nice day and I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all later. Man, uh, that that was one of the best days of my life, honestly. And it's going to take some beating. My, my God.